So I hear you want to start making content. Yes, that's correct. Nice. So I presume you've got the basics, camera, microphone. Yep, got them all. Cool. Platform to edit on? Yeah, downloaded a bit to resolve. Ooh. Nice. And have you got access to some graphics and effects for your videos to stand out? Graphics? Yeah, you know like the latest release for Motion VFX, M2 before? Basically a pack full of high quality plugins to take your videos to the next level. I don't know, it sounds a little bit complicated, especially because I'm just starting out. Well, that's exactly why Motion VFX has created a super simple drag and drop system so you can get incredible results in seconds. Drag and drop? You should have led with that. What was it called again? Motion? motionvfx.com. Okay, in all seriousness now, let's take a deep dive into the pack. So once you've installed MTuber from the installer, you'll want to head over to the effects tab and search MTuber 4. And this is where you'll find all the titles, effects, and backgrounds. And as previously mentioned, all the assets in this pack work in a drag and drop basis, whether that's dragging the title onto the timeline or an effect directly onto the clip. Within a few clicks, you can take your videos to the next level. Lastly, as a general note, Motion VFX packs are optimized to work on DaVinci Resolve version 19 or newer. So make sure you back up and update your Resolve to the latest version for the best experience. So diving into this pack, as a general overview, we have nine different sections we'll get into. First, we have the camera movements. These will drop onto your timeline to imitate camera movements on top of your footage and graphics. Next, we have just the one overlay, which is grain, giving your footage a filmic look. Then we have four placeholders that allows you to manipulate your footage in different ways. Next, we have the backgrounds, a logo section, social media, tools, typography, and finally, where it says the M2 before, that is just all of your transitions. We'll break these down step by step. So we'll get started in the larger section of the pack, which is everything that comes under titles. And first up is the backgrounds. So these are different ways where you can add interest, text, and creativity when you don't have any footage showing up. So if I drag this first one onto the timeline, you're going to see this cool warped text effect. So from here, we'll head into the Inspector tab, which we have on the right. And this is pretty much how we'll manipulate all of the different effects and titles within this pack. And the first thing you want to do on pretty much all of these different effects is tick this 4K quality box if you're using a timeline that's just 4K. This ensures for the correct scaling and the quality of the graphic. So first up in this section, we have these in and out points. And what is really clever about these motion VFX graphics is that the animation automatically adjusts to the length of time that you make the layer. So if I make this a lot longer, the animation is automatically going to adjust to that amount of time. However, if you make it too short, the title won't quite animate out due to the time that it would take. And after these in and out points is where the background controls will start to differ. Depending on the background you're using, there'll be a different amount of tabs to control. This one is of course a text-based background, so we'll have more title controls. However, some of the other ones are maybe more color-based, so you have more color controls. So first is content controls. This tab is quite standard across every title and effect from most of the effects, and this pretty much is the overarching control center that manipulates the position, the sizing, and the rotation. So use this when you're controlling the entire graphic as a whole, as opposed to the individual sections that the rest of the other tabs will control. And in this background, we do have a light and dark mode, so you can toggle in between to see which one you prefer. But don't worry, these colors can still be manipulated later on. Next, we have two title tabs that control the text on this background. Now, these are quite standard ways to manipulate your text. You know, you could choose the font, the colors, the sizes, the spacing, all the different ways so you can get the effects looking exactly how you want. So I'll change this to M2 before. And then you can't quite see the full title, so I'll just scale that back a little bit. There looks good. And then I might just go from gray to giving it a little bit of a blue look. And there, that looks good to me. Now, for the subtitle control, I don't actually want the subtitle in this case. So all I have to do is toggle off this box here and that gets rid of it. Now moving on to our effects controls, and this is where you can really dial in the look. You can control the blur, the dent, which is what actually gives this warp effect. You can control the grain and finally the prism. How I personally like to understand how a lot of these things work is just by playing around with the sliders, you know, just bumping them all the way up, all the way down, just seeing what controls the different effects. Now, in this case, I think less is more. You don't want to go too much. Otherwise, you will just not be able to see the titles. So I think about there looks quite good. And then the dent, we can toggle on and off if we want to. I quite like it. Probably can go maybe around there. The grain, that is optional. In this case, I'm going to take it off because I don't think it adds too much for this. And the prism is definitely something I'll keep because I do like that effect. Yeah, that's a bit too much. But we'll dial it down. And I think there looks good. So as you can see, you can really get specific and dial in the look that you're going for. The last section in this tab is the background controls. This is where, like I mentioned before, you can change the colors of the background and how it looks. So you have two different sections, the light and the dark color. When you're manipulating the light color, that will change this background here, but only if you're on the light mode. 
if you go to dark mode, changing this color won't do a thing. So it doesn't really matter what mode you're on, as long as the one you select is the one you want to change the color of. So I'll make this slight orange. And then going down here, we have the different background options. So here we have a background grid, and that gives it the kind of digital texture. But if you're not a fan of how this is looking currently, you can make the grid size larger, you know, to really get that grid size to be quite obvious. I again think it's quite nice how it is at default. So if you want to just reset, you can just double click on the title here and it will snap back to where it originally was. And that's your backgrounds. Just like I mentioned before, the different background options will have slightly different tab options, but they all work the same way when it comes to manipulating the look you want. Now we'll move on to the logo section. So this second option that I've chosen here has a cool animation of your logo and then some text coming in. Now, in my opinion, this is a really simple and effective way to create an intro to your video. All you'll need to do here is head into the inspector tab, tick that quality box. For now, we can skip over the in and out points, the content controls, as we have already gone over those. I'll go into the logos control and all you need to do here is hit browse, go through your folders and find your logo. And once you've done that, you have the options here to manipulate the logo's appearance in the title. So you can make it larger, you can change the position of it, the rotation, etc. You can manipulate all of these things again to get the look that you're going for. Next, as we get further along in this logo title, we have these title controls. So the first one is let's dive in, then it moves into TED analyzers. So if this, I'll probably change this to M2 before. So we go from the logo, let's dive in to M2 before. And then we have the arrow controls and I quite like how this looks ready because it's very similar to the YouTube colors. You can of course change the color scale and even the roundness of this. And finally, we have the background controls, similar to what we had before where you can change the colors and the look. This solid color is gonna change the main color you have here. And then you have the lines, as you can see, talking that on and off. You can choose how many they are. Here you can customize the frequency of the lines and then choose if you want them distorted. And again, I quite like this look. As to me, it gives it that really cool digital look. And the last tab here is the drop shadow controls, which you'd use to make your text and your logo stand out a little bit more from the background. So don't feel limited on how you can use these logo effects because there's a variety of scenarios from sponsored videos to cool glitch effects. Now I'll move on to the social media titles. Now these are easy ways to remind your audience to engage with the video <clears throat> and cool ways to show YouTube comments. So these top three comments will all work in a very similar way where you can manipulate the information within the inspector. And that's everything from the profile photo which can be edited via the avatar section, the username, the comment itself, and the effect of how it's presented. So these are just really cool ways to show the comments from the audience. And then the rest of the titles are more to do with the actual audience engagement. But again, just like everything else has been, it's super easy to customize in the inspector tab. For me, this one's pretty much good to go. As you can see, it perfectly moves the footage and makes it seem like it's a real video. But if I find kind of a hero frame from here, take that box, and then you can just dial in any changes you want. If we go more into like the LCD picture controls, this for me is where it really makes a difference. You can get that kind of textured look by just unchecking this box. You can change how it looks, the opacity, again, dialing it up to how you like it. But for me, this kind of is good to go. Next, we have the tools. Now these are a mixture of titles and effects you can use to make your footage stand out that much more. Whether that's pointing things out with a circle drawing, highlighting a specific part of the frame with this feather selection, or simply just being a countdown. You have loads of different assets in here that allow you to add some really cool add-ons that improve your videos that much more. You just have to refer to the inspector tab to make any adjustments. And the last section of the titles is the typography. Now this is where you'll get all your real text titles that you can use for intros, definitions, callouts, a huge array of titles to choose from that you can completely customize. I personally really love this lower 03 title as it's the exact type of title I use for my personal documentary work. Now I don't have to go through all the effort of creating it myself. Now I know that was quite a lot, but not to worry, that was the biggest section in the entire pack. Now we're gonna head over to the effects tab where we have my favorite part of the pack and that is the camera movements. So just like you're seeing now, these effects allow you to zoom into your footage in a super dynamic way. We have five different effects here which work in a fairly similar way. But my first recommendation with these is to not use them directly on your footage, but instead using an adjustment layer. That way you have way more control over the effect and you don't end up having trouble using these effects on longer clips. So if I drag on the 3D scroll onto my adjustment layer, this is what the default setting does. You can see we get a cool zoom in effect, but with the footage tilting and panning at the same time to create a 3D look. Now, if you didn't know already, 
Doing this manually would take a very, very long time. So shout out to the guys at Motion VFX behind the scenes, making our lives so much easier. But from here, we'll head into the inspector tab where we'll be modifying all of the effects. So first we have these in and out points that are slightly different than the ones before, but not to worry as they work in the exact same way, they just have these sliders controlling the rate of the animation. So if you feel like it's coming in too quick, you can just slow it down and the same thing for the out. I recommend playing around with these so you can find which one best suits you. And just like before, you can drag the layout to your desired length. But an important note to remember when controlling these is to make sure you never adjust the length of the layer from the beginning, as this causes negative frame timing. So ensure you always adjust it from the end. Now getting into the camera controls, this is where the actual movement is manipulated. Now when I'm controlling this, I actually use the zoom slider first so I can control how much I want to zoom in before moving on to the zoom pivot as that controls where I'm zooming into. So I always like to zoom out a little bit just so I can see a bit more and then I'll adjust the exact position where I want this to zoom into. And the next few options that all have rate next to them controls how much is actually going to move. So currently they're all set to zero apart from the slide Y rate. And that's why when I play this, you can see the camera moves down because our Y is set to 0.1. So be gentle with these sliders as they are quite sensitive, but find your point of where you want the zooms to go. And the best way to do that is to go to the beginning of where the zoom starts, understanding where that is, going to the end and figuring out, okay, where is it I want that zoom to end? And the exact same thing applies for the tilt, pan and roll. Now you may be wondering why I've zoomed into this blank space. Well, that's because one of the great things about these motion VFX packs is how well they link together. So I've actually paired this with one of the list titles. So now that 3D zoom is not just going onto the footage, but it's also going onto the text. And then lastly, we do have the background controls. Now, this may not be too relevant depending on how you zoom into the image, but I'll show you the use cases of where it is relevant. So if you zoom in and the footage ends up having a blank space like this, this is the background you can control. Just like before, you have all the different options to control the background so you can get the desired look you want. For me, I personally prefer going back and keeping it within the footage. That, in my opinion, is how you make the 3D effect more realistic. So most of the other camera movements are going to work in a very similar way in terms of control. Other than the custom movement option, where you can dial in completely how you want the zoom to work again, play around and see how creative you can get with these. And don't worry if you make any mistakes, you're a control or command Z away from getting back to where you were. One final note on the camera movement though, and I promise if there's anything you want to take away from this video, this is it. So for my videos, I do a lot of keyframing to do the exact keyframing that the zoom option offers. So now having the zoom effect saves me a bunch of time from that keyframing. However, I have to adjust that zoom effect so it's how I like it. I like to change the movement easing in to a cubic setting and the zoom scale to about 11%. And that's usually the base I use for my talking heads. So because I'm lazy and I don't want to keep putting in those same effects over and over again, what you can do is actually open up your media pool, drag this adjustment clip once you've got all the effects in the way you like it into your media pool, and now it's there. So I'll change it to zoom in. And now when you put this onto your timeline, it has all the effects in the exact way you saved it. And better yet, sticking this in a power bin means that adjustment clip is going to be in every single DaVinci Resolve project you open. Now, if that tip doesn't deserve a like on this video, I don't know what does. So now we'll move into this grain section and it's exactly how it sounds. Adding grain to your footage gives it that filmic look. You can control the strength, the size and the colors to ensure you get the exact type of grain you're going for. An important note for this though is that the grain is quite taxing on your editing device. So you may struggle to play back if you do have a lot of grain on. So I suggest using this near the end of your editing session. And to finish off the effects tab, we have placeholders. Again, these are super easy to use by dragging and dropping the effect directly onto the footage. And the first one we have is the avatar. So you can see what this does is put your footage in a small window in the bottom left corner. And where I'd really love this isn't actually on the footage itself, but if I was doing screen recordings and I wanted to have myself in the frame. So if I drag the avatar onto myself talking, now when it plays, I can easily be there in the frame and this saves so much time from manually having to crop myself out, make a circle, make myself the right size. It's all done in one click. So from here, I can then adjust the controls here so I can move myself, can make the circle bigger. I can also make myself bigger inside the circle and move myself to reframe there. 
So again, this is just a super easy tool to save you a bunch of time. Now the next placeholder works in a very similar way, except it's a rectangle as opposed to the circle. That's pretty much the only difference. Placeholder 4 is more similar to an overlay effect where you drag it onto your footage and it gives you a grid texture and a slight warp to the footage, making it look like it's footage from an actual screen. So this could be super useful for pullout transitions or maybe when you green screen some footage onto a TV or a phone. It just makes it that much more realistic. And the last one we have is for vertical footage. This allows you to fill the screen entirely, making sure you aren't leaving any negative space. And you have the different options to modify this where you can go to scale so it just gets bigger in the background, a mirror which is the default where it mirrors it either side, and a copy. After that you can control where the footage is, you control the scale and the rotation. And then if you wanted to make the footage stand out a bit more you can up the contrast, brightness or saturation. And finally you can then control the background. This would be completely up to personal preference, how big you want the background, how blurred you want it, if you want this grid texture. Again, play around the dials and see what works best for your footage. And I've left the easiest section for last and that is the transitions. For the transitions, all you need to do is just drag them in between the clips. You can modify how long they take by either adjusting the transition on the timeline or if you know it needs to be an exact amount of time, you can just drag them out of seconds here. And just like all the titles and effects from before, we'll use the inspector tab to adjust the transition to how we want it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this overview has been helpful for you to understand what this pack can do. But if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them down below or head over to the Motion VFX website. I've been JC and this has been your MG Before Overview.